if you're passionate about Bitcoin, you're obviously watching the greater economy, Fed trying to navigate whether there's going to be a soft landing. And I see kind of two two narratives right now, this inflation versus deflation tug of war, as some people call it. Some are saying that, you know, um, at some point we're going to hit that hard landing. They're going to have to come in and print like they've never printed before. Others are saying that there's just a shift in the regime. They're not going to allow for this kind of quantitative easing that has happened before um, and how that will impact everything, inc including liquidity for for Bitcoin. Can you maybe um, sift through the noise that we're hearing out there? What, what are your thoughts on the macro picture and its impact on Bitcoin? Um, I think that the most important place to start is to recognize that that every conventional economic metric that is talked about in mainstream media or or in mainstream political conversations is a uh, a man made uh, fabricated metric. It's just it's just a synthesized metric that is created, named, and defined and measured by an interested organization that has a vested interest in creating a certain effect. So, for example, you know, the employment statistics. Well, if 40% of the people don't work, how can we be at full employment? Because I just I redefine the employment number to not include people that stop looking for a job. <laughs> Right. Um, uh, inflation. The current inflation is core inflation. That's the change in prices, you know, not including the highly volatile food and energy. OK, so if I don't use energy and I don't use food and I pick other things, any arbitrary things and I measure them in any arbitrary way, I can uh, generate any arbitrary number. But what number do I want? I want a low number because I've indexed uh, pensions and indexed my cost to that number. So this, the inflation is an, isn't, it's just a synthesized number two. We made up the one we wanted. How about the size of the economy? The GDP is growing. Well, if I shut down the economy for two years and nobody could buy one third of the stuff they used to be able to buy, how is the economy growing? And the economy is growing if I print 40% more money and I measure the economy in the money, then the economy could shrink by 30%, but the GDP is said to have grown 2%. So I'm changing uh, the, the definition of the economy. An economic unit used to be worth 35% more three years ago. So uh, all the labor statistics, all the monetary statistics, all the inflation statistics, all of these things, the definition, like, will we have a soft landing? Well, of course we'll have a soft landing because it's politically advantageous to have a soft landing. So how do you create a soft landing? You simply define a measure of the economy that you know will land softly, and then you go and you track that and you report that. And there are parts of the economy that had a hard landing, but we simply don't report that. Just like um, if I if I um, if it turns out that it's too expensive to buy ribeye steak, I just remove steak from the CPI market basket and I normalize right. uh, boxed cereal. Right. And uh, and then I and if I want to be extreme, I say not only is box cereal the new norm, I'll say it turns out that steak is bad for you anyway. We heard it gives you a heart attack and kills you. So so I can actually change the definition of the economic unit. So I, my point here really is um, everybody's. You know, everybody's looking uh, at this uh, debating these numbers. But all the debates are fabricated such that such that um, everybody's being told what to focus on and the things they're focusing upon aren't really necessarily relevant. It's like like when you have a kid and you want them to pick either the pink, you know, curtains or the green curtains for their room. So you give them a choice of pink or green or or ugly psychedelic polka dot. <laughs> 
and you let them choose. And they go, well, mommy, I hate ugly psychedelic polka dot. I'm not sure about green or pink. I guess I want pink, right? It's, did they choose? Did it happen? <laughs> We're giving people this, uh, you know, these set of distorted metrics. What's going to happen is, our manufacturing ability is we're going to manufacture more stuff generally better, except when the government shuts down factories, which they've been doing with the trade war. The AIs are going to create more information content stuff, more, more virtual stuff, infinite more, and the price of that is going to go down. If you want to measure things that technology impacts, it'll be deflationary. And so if you put them all in your market basket, then there's going to be a soft landing because we're going to find out, you, you know what, this year, I've never had a greater supply of streaming video, television shows and movies to watch in my entire life. In okay. fact, I could say I probably have a hundred X more streaming television shows to watch this year than I did um, five years ago. So did the economy grow by a factor of 100? It did if you count each streaming video I watch as one unit of output. But on the other hand, you know, there's a piece of electrical equipment I ordered, a transformer switch four years ago. I still can't get it. Wow. Four years later, there's certain products that used to be produced that aren't produced. We mothballed a third of the airplanes. We mothballed all sorts of things. There's all sorts of businesses that are out of business. There's all sorts of diversity of goods and services you just can't buy anymore. But if you don't ask for them and we don't count them, then they didn't go away. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say here is there's a lot of conventional debate in the macroeconomic sphere about conventional synthesized metrics. And the GDP results don't track the economy. The inflation results don't track the price of stuff. You know, the, uh, the, the rate of change, you know, uh, sector to sector doesn't necessarily track what you think it tracks because the people that create the metrics have uh, too much flexibility with regard to what they choose to measure and how they choose to measure it. There's an old, um, there's an old saying in the propaganda business you can't tell people what to think, but we can tell them what to think about. Mm -hmm. Very true. Right. So I can create, I can create a crisis by lassoing a set of commonplace events and putting them all on one page and like shining a flashlight at it and saying, you have to cope with this. You have to address this. And I can diffuse a crisis by simply ignoring an overwhelming set of negative events. And so ultimately here, when you say, well, is it going to happen or is it not going to happen? The real question is, what is the government going to want to happen? What is the mainstream consensus going to want to happen? <laughs> you know, and when we shut down the entire world for two years on television, you know, stocks were going through the roof and people were, you know, Jerome Powell lowered the interest rate to zero. Everybody said, this is great for stocks. It's a party for stocks. Everybody made a fortune in the next eight weeks. And it's, they're completely diverged from reality, right? We delaminate from reality and people talk about synth synthetic interpretations. So ultimately, when, that's why I wouldn't engage in discussion about will we get it will we avoid the hard landing will we have the hard landing you know is the economy shrinking or growing you know you're debating about whether there's uh, mainstream people are debating whether we have two or three percent inflation mm -hmm. the true monetary inflation is ten percent except where it's twenty percent or thirty percent right and yet they're debating between two and three because that just keeps everybody in a comfort zone because people would literally freak out but That's if they right. knew, uh, if they had a raw number. So I think oftentimes the, um, the, the popular mainstream debates are over manufactured, synthesized metrics, which, um, which are all wrong. Right. And, and they 
they don't address the elephant in the room. Like the fact that, well, 40% of the people aren't working. Should they be? Right. Right. <laughs> no, not, not is the unemployment rate moved from 3.1 to 3.2 or from 3.1 mm -hmm. to 3.0. Right. I mean, that's, uh, that's irrelevant. So, uh, yeah, I think that, um, we will always manage these things so so as to kick the can down the road and avoid acknowledging you know anything that's uh that's terribly disturbing in the near near term time frame